Well, we're uh, we're ready to rec recording. So we're recording now. All right. So uh, welcome, welcome everybody to uh, February eighteenth, twenty twenty one, Buildings, Facilities, and Capital Expenditures Committee. Um, start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance yeah. to the flag, to the flag of the United States, United States. of America, to the Republic, Republic. Republic. which it stands, one nation, under God, under God. God. Indivisible. Indivisible. with liberty and justice, justice for all. All right, thank you. All right, so uh, so we'll get right right started um, uh, with the DPW presentation. Uh, Kevin, I'll, I'll hand it over to you if you want to go ahead and introduce your uh, your 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 uh, consultant and uh, whatever, uh, whichever present whichever way you want to go ahead and present. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, so we have um, Ziad from Environmental Partners. He's the uh, lead engineer for the project. Um, we do a lot of work with Environmental Partners and Ziad in particular. Um, he has a lot of experience um, with other towns and agencies with um, this same type of uh, project. Um, I, I asked him to kind of just come with an, an update of where we're at. Um, and we, we went through, I mean, the project itself. I mean, I can give another quick summary of the project if that's what, you know, we can do that. I think everyone understands the project. It's a replacement of the force main from the Auburn Street uh, pump house um, all the way to the Brockton interceptor manhole. Um, <clears throat> almost two miles um, includes all new piping and then full reconstruction of the roadway um, of Auburn Street paving um, some water work on Auburn Street um, and obviously all the restoration um, you know, associated with the work. Um, and then, you know, we've been working on the design for probably at least a couple of years now. I mean, if it wasn't for COVID, we'd probably already have a bucket in the ground. Um, you know, the original plan was really to be working this year. Um, so the next move is, um, to get town meeting and, um, you know, take the next steps in the funding. Uh, but I guess I could turn it over to Ziad and just ask him to kind of give an update where we're at. Right, David. Ziad, Ziad, if you don't mind, um, uh, I just want to, uh, just for the record and for anybody uh, uh, watching from home, maybe I could um, put it into, uh, into very uh, non-technical terms. Um, essentially, uh, you know, to, to, uh, and then you can build uh, upon that of, 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 of after I'm done. So essentially, um, the uh, investig uh, there was investigation in regards to the 20 inch so sewer force main uh, that runs from Whitman to Brockton. Uh, it was identified that there was corrosion uh, done by external circumstances, uh, 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 potential corros corrosive type soils. And um, there was a, a recommendation to replace that uh, forced main, sewer force main. Um, the, invest, uh, the investigation and the recommendations are included in a report called the 20 inch sewer force main assessment findings and analysis, which is on the town's website and essentially uh, provides all the technical information uh, of, uh, in there for the, for the ultimate recommendation of, uh, of replacing that pipeline and uh, provides four different options um, with uh, with cost estimates and um, uh, advantages and disadvantages of, of each of the four alternatives. Um, and just as, as part of the record, um, so uh, as, uh, as the, uh, we anticipated this fund, uh, the request for funding for this project to be done in a January 2021 special town meeting, that meeting got postponed. This committee had um, had voted in the affirmative to uh, for a sixteen million dollar uh, uh, funding request for uh, for the special town meeting. That town meeting got postponed, so we, we thought it would be a good idea to um, 
asked DPW and Environmental Partners back uh, to vet out the project just a little bit more. And as part of that, we uh, we sent it, I sent an email to DPW uh, to include things uh, as part of the discussion. And let me just go through them for the record. Uh, potential for outside outside funding, uh, cost estimates, cost estimate estimating methodology, outline project alternatives, uh, filed easements, right to maintain, right to notification of excav excavation, uh, bid alt add-ons. Um, the final 20 inch uh, sewer force main assessment findings uh, report and uh, CVs, resumes of, uh, uh, of the personnel working on the uh, project. So that, that's an email that uh, everyone on this committee has had. Uh, I just wanted to read it out for, for those uh, that who may be watching this uh, meeting. Uh, so Ziad, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Uh, Ziad Thierry with Environmental Partners Group, um, a principal and a project manager. I've been with the company for 15 years. Uh, and I don't really have a presentation. I was uh, under the impression we're going to ask some questions, but I do have a lot of screens I could share with you. And if I may, can I share a screen? Absolutely. Uh, yes, I might have to allow that to happen. And let me see if I can. Um... Yeah, I don't see an option on my end. So go ahead and try and, and see if that works. Yep, it's working. All right. So this is basically uh, based on what we just said, this is the alignment. It's uh, about 16,000 linear feet. The pipeline is a 20 inch duct iron uh, cement line, duct iron pipe. It's about 16,000 feet pumps from the Auburn Street facility. Uh, it has about maybe about a mile and a half on Auburn Street and then kind of takes a turn, uh, goes across an easement about 6,000 linear feet, right behind Massasoit Community College through the landfill, uh, through an easement of the municipal landfill in Brockton. And then finally discharges into a manhole on Southfield in Brockton. So the pipeline was constructed in 1984. In 2016 and 2017, Sometimes in September, October, it had two uh, ruptures off of Elger Street. And we were retained in 2018 to do the assessment and the analyses of what was the potential cause of the failure. Uh, just for the, uh, I don't, again, like I don't, I could share resumes if you like in the future, but I've been involved in the Plymouth Force May rupture that happened in 2015. This was about 10 miles. I was involved in the Nantucket rupture in 2018. And today we've been retained to design a force main uh, on Nantucket, it's about three and a half miles. Uh, we completed designs of two force mains in Plymouth. Uh, we work in with the DPW and the commissioners here in, in Whitman to design this force main. Uh, we've started the work uh, probably about a year ago. We've gone through the permitting and I could walk you through what permitting was completed and where, at what stage are we, out, we are with the design. I'm working with a force main assessment in Colchester, Connecticut, and I'm working with the city of Worcester on the force main. So uh, we do have uh, tremendous resumes on force mains. I'm supported by a group of people who collectively have over 100 years of experience in sewer collection and distribution and force mains. So uh, with that, uh, I could tell you today we're uh, on the design we completed. We're probably about 90% design. We had to include some SRF language because we submitted the PF project evaluation form to MassDEP through the SRF program for funding back in August of 2020. Uh, unfortunately, the intended use plan just came out this uh, couple of weeks ago and Whitman was not on the list. It was on the draft list, but it didn't make the final list because they, there was about over $1 billion in ask. And I think the funding was probably about half as much. So we're gonna clean up the specification and the, the plans to, because you know at this point they're not SRF they don't have to follow the SRF guidelines. Uh, in terms of the design, like I said, we are about 90% design and the intent is to wrap it up by the end of this month. Uh, on the permitting piece, we had a list. And let me just go back a little bit to the uh, report itself that was provided back in 2019. 
So uh, in 2019, we were retained to, to do the assessment. So we uh, did about 80 boreholes along the alignment. And the boreholes where some of them were located within the right of way on Auburn, uh, Southfield, and then anything anywhere in between. And then of course we did a lot of the geoprobing in the easement and the cross country piece between Alger and Thatcher Street. Uh, of course, as you know, uh, some of the alignment runs across the landfill and some of it goes through the Brockton Auto Parts junkyard. Uh, all the easements have been recorded and they're owned by the town of Whitman. Uh, 5,900 linear feet of this horseman runs in the cross country piece. So the intent of, and in addition to the, to the geoprobing and the soil testing, uh, the manhole itself has about five structures located along the alignment. And this, the intent of the structures is to have uh, vacuum breakers, air release valves, and vacuum relief. So when the force main, when the pumps come on at the Auburn Street facility, the air gets, or the sewage gets pushed in the pipeline and the air gets expelled. And conversely, when the pump shut down, the valves would allow the air to come into the pipeline to prevent the collapse. So in there, because those locations, the force main itself is accessible. So we went in there and we did ultrasonic testing and the ultrasonic testing is intended to determine whether a loss of thickness of the pipeline exists. And if the metal pipe loses thickness, that means it's, a, it's an indication of an internal corrosion of the pipeline, meaning hydrogen sulfides, and other elements would start corroding the pipe from the inside. So we determined this was not likely the case of what caused the ruptures in 2016 and 2017, and therefore we focused on the external piece. And out of the 80 uh, test holes that we tested and sent out to the laboratory, we followed a procedure by the American Water Work Association, which is C105. And it's a 10 point rating system on the uh, uh, soil conditions, and it looks at sulfides, redox potential, pH, uh, resistivity, external loads, groundwater, and rates the system. So out of the 80, we found locations where 17 or 18 of them across the alignment with the pipeline could be compromised because of the external, uh, because of the soils. So this was the result in a nutshell of the soil testing and internal testing of the pipeline. Uh, based on this, we did an alternative analysis and presented, I believe it was like four options. And one of the options was to basically keep this pipe in place, install a new pipe. And obviously you need the flow to, to you can't take the station offline. So in other words, you need this pipe to, pipe to be running, I put a new pipe in, test it, commission it, and once it's commissioned, you could turn to this one here, drain it, and then perhaps do the assessment to it. So the combination of the uh, alternative analyses that we provided were to one, abandon the pipe in place and just put a new pipe in, two, uh, put a new pipe in, go back, assess the existing, and then based on the findings, you could perform the necessary repairs. And then at the time we provided uh, you know, cost estimates, uh, of course, when you don't, do, you know, when you're not designing the project at, at that point, and you don't know what the permitting hoop that you have to jump through, you know, those numbers were kind of, kind of similar, very close to here. But uh, today, with, with the design advancing to 90%, and then knowing exactly what the permit requirements are going to be, the cost estimate is a lot more accurate. So, uh, in terms of the permitting, we. Uh, we had gone through, we pretty much completed with a permit with the exception of two and I'll list them. Uh, to permit this, because a lot of the alignment is located within wetland. And of course, a lot of it is within the city of Brockton. So we had to file a notice of intent through the uh, Whitman and Brockton Conservation Commissions. And those were completed uh, back in December, 2016. We have the order of conditions for both. Uh, we did file a pre-notification form through the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And because the uh, 
the alignment is located within an unnamed stream and, and the uh, uh, Beaver Brook. Those are uh, considered to be navigable waters of the United States. So this is uh, uh, subject to section 10 of the 404 permit. And we submitted this back in October of 2020. And we're awaiting the final decision from the Army Corps. Uh, we submitted a project notification form to Mass Historic Commission and the findings came back as negative. Uh, we submitted a MEPA, uh, Executive Office of Environmental Affairs. We, we did a uh, environmental notification form and we had a public hearing and this came back. We have the certificate for that. Uh, and then uh, we submitted the Mass DEP on the 401 water quality certification and we have a site meeting and the site walkthrough with them on the 23rd of February. And the last piece, because this pipeline runs through the uh, municipal landfill in Brockton through an easement, uh, utility easement, which is about 20 feet, uh, Mass DEP, the solid waste group requires a, uh, a minor landfill facility modification. It's a permit and we're still waiting on the results of that. Uh, once we receive the um, post-closure uh, modification and the 401 from Mass DEP, this project will be completely permitted at this point. Uh, I know you had asked a question about the cost estimate and how we arrived to this cost estimate. So uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, the, the force mains, they're not like water pipes or gravity sewer pipes that uh, municipalities put them out to bid on a regular basis. A uh, lot of these force mains are constructed in the eighties. I could give you the, the five or six I'm working on today. They're all almost have the similar age. Uh, they, uh, you know, a lot of them ruptured and this is what prompted municipalities to go back and address them. And perhaps uh, some folks decide to not just fix them, but then also put a secondary pipe to have redundancy in the system. Because what happened here in 2016, 2017, when, when the first rupture and the second rupture happened, I think the cost was north of 500,000 each after. And the only way around it, because that's your only pipe, you'd have to kind of shut down the station and start using the, the uh, vacuum truck, the, uh, the uh, sewage truck to pump out of the wet well and then transport them to the wastewater treatment plant. There's a lot of disruption associated with it, but that's really the only way if you don't have redundancy in the system. So the, the basis of the cost, uh, in this instance, by the way, we elected based on the basis of the design report and the election of the pipeline, we, uh, elected to go with a plastic pipe. And the plastic pipe is a combination of polyethylene and the PVC pipe. Uh, in case there's any leachate coming off of uh, a Brockton system, the, the, uh, the landfill or anything from uh, corrosive soils, the plastic pipe doesn't corrode. And the same thing, the polyethylene pipe doesn't corrode. And it's been tried and true and used in landfill applications and anywhere that is subject to groundwater or high groundwater table. Uh, and the cost of the cost of this is a 20 inch um, Nantucket was a 20 inch Plymouth was a 24 inch Colchester Connecticut is 20 inch and they're all identically almost every single one of them the cost per linear foot to purchase the pipe is identical that's not really, really not going to change the only difference is if you're working on Nantucket it's it's a totally different area so you know the, there's the cost associated with shipping the pipe over and then uh, putting people up in the hotel, but the, the basis for how we came up to the cost estimate here, we, we really relied on Plymouth quite a bit and some work that we've done in framing it. Um, and again, uh, we ran the cost estimate by a couple of different contractors and the numbers came in almost identical to what we have on the, on the base. So this is the basis how we determine the cost and I'd be more than happy to, to answer any specific question on that. Uh, of course, what uh, the, the only difference from the report that you saw back in 2019 and this, uh, the paving got extended quite a bit because on Auburn Street, the decision was to pave curb to curb and we extended it right up to Route 18, or shy of Route 18. Uh, also, there was some um, added some uh, uh, asbestos pipe to be replaced within the, uh, the first piece of the alignment. Uh, and then, of course, once we've gone through the permitting and the requirements of the uh, conservation commissions working within 
the cross country easement and having the matting that kind of added quite a bit to the cost that was presented back from what was presented back in 2019. So um, all in all, I think with the base bid based on the cost estimate is a little over $11 million and we have some contingency built in there. And then we had, uh, we had a, a structured the bid such that the alternate, we have two alternates. So you, you put the first pipe, you put the pipe in, you test it, you commission it, and you put it all line. And then the first option would be to drain the existing pipe, uh, TV it, and then assess the damage. Have a, have a true indication or a true understanding what the damage within the pipeline is. And then make appropriate repairs. And for the alternate number uh, number two, which is if you were if you think that the pipe is worth rehabbing and having the pipe sitting there as a redundant pipeline, we had estimated certain quantities, which is a thousand linear feet for pipe to be replaced and other thousand for pipe to be lined. And this is how we raised the alternate the alternate. And with that. Uh, the base bid and the two alternates we had them priced at 14.6 million and I think uh, the town requested 16 million dollars a town meeting. So th that's that's what the basis of the cost estimate is. Um, I'd like to also discuss the funding opportunity. So uh, back in the SRF program, just about every project for the last 10 years that you, put in a project uh, evaluation form through the SRF program, almost get funded, gets funded and almost, almost gets approved at the, uh, uh, with the SRF program. This year, like I mentioned, they had about $1 billion in asks and they only had half the funding. So we made the list, but unfortunately we did not make the, uh, the uh, we just below the funding line. Now, what happens is oftentimes uh, projects do drop off. And next week, I think the IUP list is going through the SRF through the trust to, you know, follow on the public comments, they have a final voting on it. So um, as of today, Whitman is not on that list, but if there is a chance that a few projects do drop out uh, before Whitman, we could get moved up. Uh, there's no, nothing that, no guarantees. Uh, we're still working with the SRF program. And as soon as we know, we could certainly uh, go back and, and uh, discuss it with the DPW and the, and the commissioners to, uh, to see if, if that's an option. Um, other funding opportunities, uh, you know, the SRF program, back to that a little bit, uh, you know, usually most communities get 2% interest rate um, on the borrowing. And then if you're part of a, uh, what's called the uh, housing choice community, if you designate as housing choice community, you, you probably get a, a rate reduction to one and a half percent. And that's all depending on the median household income. Um, the, uh, and the, with the SRF, there's a small portion of the principal would be qualified for principal forgiveness. And it's really hard to tell how much of that principal is, but could be one to 3% perhaps on average. On the, uh, I know there was a document that was shared for the uh, sewer sewer rate relief fund. Uh, definitely, that uh, that would be applicable. The only difference is you'd have to be in debt today, so you'd have to have the the uh, uh, you have to have the debt service because you could qualify. So this would be good for fiscal year 2022. If you were to uh, fund the project and go to construction, this application is should be pretty straightforward to uh, to submit it. Uh, to the state and then get some relief that way. Uh, out there, we looked into some other funding opportunities, the EDA CARES Act, that's a rolling admission. There's no deadline on this, but then of course there's an economic development that is associated with this. It's uh, not simply um, having a pipe to, to be replaced or repaired. I don't think that would qualify. You, you won't be able to make a case that way. But if there's a housing component an economic development that would be associated with it, that would be certainly a consideration. Uh, what happened in tw between 2008 and 2009, if you guys remember the, uh, the uh, you know, post the recession there, there was a shovel ready project. And if you had, there's a lot of funding and we, we keep a you know, close eye on this. If something comes out of Washington DC on the, uh, 
you know, shovel ready type of project, infrastructure stuff, we're, we're on the lookout. And of course, anything that comes out, we'd be more than happy to submit an application and a grant um, request for anything that's out there. But uh, other funding opportunities, I think at this point, there, there isn't a whole lot, um, aside from the SRF and that we discussed, and, uh, and then maybe the EDA, but the EDA is a long shot. Uh, I'm not sure if I missed anything, Mr. Chairman, from your list that you- Yeah, you no, that was perfect. I, I think you gave, you gave a, great, uh, a great summary. Uh, Zayed, if, if you don't mind, could you take that graphic off so, so I, I can't see everybody on, on the meeting? Sure. Uh, just to call out for questions. All right, perfect. So yeah, so that was perfect. I mean, I think I think I think one thing that you didn't focus on maybe was that. Well, you did, but I'll, I'll emphasize. But it, I think there's a a high sense of difficulty in regards to the project once you cross over Aldridge. You have you ha you have all those um, the landfill, the wetlands, uh, another another city's pro uh, property all those difficulties uh, 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 on that side of the project, which, which, is, which is a fairly lengthy portion of the line. Uh, I'll just emphasize that for you. So, so yeah, to that point, I think, uh, you know, we, the piece that is the landfill um, and the unnamed stream and the Beaver Brook, just to minimize impact and working with the regulators and uh, all the agencies, the, uh, the idea was to cross, put a pipe through a, uh, a trenchless technology instead of digging and exposing and disturbing wetland. Everybody was on board and basically suggested that this pipe would be done by directional drilling. And we have a good portion of this pipeline would be uh, drilled, um, you know, you, you do a couple pits, launching pit, receiving pit, and you, you push a pipe through uh, so you're not disturbing much of the wetland and that would obviously reduce the cost of restoration. So this would happen, uh, you know, DEP had a concern about drilling uh, or open uh, trench opening within the municipal landfill. It's about six or 700 linear feet and we all agreed with that. I think we just do it by drilling. And then of course the 5,900, much of the 5,900 uh, across the, uh, the brook and the unnamed stream, this, this will be done the same way as well. Yeah, okay. So, so uh, you did touch on uh, the funding. So, um, uh, will, will environmental partners continue to 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 make to follow up with the uh, potential for SRF and potential for any other fun, uh, uh, funding sources? Uh, Absolutely, we did reach out to uh, SRF to kind of gauge. Um, we haven't really been in this position before, where a project didn't get funded through the SRF program. They've always been. A clean water trust, you know, water, wastewater projects are almost guaranteed to get funded. Uh, like I said, this year was a unique situation. I think whether it's COVID or maybe the fear that uh, some of these projects could come to a halt. Uh, a lot of people applied and I'm sure just like anywhere else, e either um, some of them got the, uh, not just the, uh, the project description, but somebody from up above may have pushed these projects across the, uh, the finish line through the SRF. So again, they would be voting. So I reached out this uh, early on this week and they didn't commit to anything. They said there's always a possibility uh, to for the project to be moved up the line, but no guarantees. And then certainly we'll continue to, to monitor the situation and if there's a chance, certainly we'll do it. Okay, all right. So uh, I'll, I'll just open it up to the committee and ask if anybody has any further questions in regards to uh, potential funding sources for the project. So we, we put that subject to bed. All right, so, so that, that's, that's, that's that one. All right, and you, you touched on the, um, you touched on the, the cost estimates. So, so right, so in, in the, in the uh, report, there's, there's four uh, different uh, alternatives to the project. Uh, uh, um, the, the least expensive, the eight, uh, which is estimated just uh, 8.8 .8 million is a uh, just a, a, a pipe replacement. It's uh, basically keeping this pipe in place and putting no pipes. No just a minute. Sorry about that. 
Um, so, right, so the cost estimates, um, uh, the most, uh, at least expensive is the 8 million, which is just a, 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 a replacement of the piping. Um, so, uh, and then there's two alternatives, very similar is for uh, replacing the pipe, uh, installing new piping and um, uh, uh, potentially doing something with, with the old piping. And then a third alternative, which was just uh, uh, a repair to, to the piping. So, so I, I don't think I don't think anyone in this, uh, unless I'm, don't let me speak for everybody, but uh, uh, I, I don't think anybody's in the thought process that uh, a rep, uh, just a minor repair to this uh, pipeline is the right way to go. So I, th I think I think based on past discussions this committee had is is you know we're on board in regards to uh, agreeing with a, a full replacement. Um, I, I think the, the questions that are coming in um, focus on um, the, the, the alternative of reusing the old pipe. And um, one question was that um, with, with, the, with the easements in place, does it, do, do, we have to, do we have to immediately rehab the old pipe or, or could we Finish, finish the project by, by laying a pipe and then and then regrouping sometime afterward and, and dealing with the, the old pipe as a, as a different project. So we discussed that with the, with the uh, commissioners and you don't really have to do anything with the existing pipe. You know, the regulations today, if, if you were to put in a new pipe, test it, commission it, and you, you need to drain this, you could just simply drain it, cut it and cap it, and then just abandon it in place. The easement across the uh, cross country and through the landfill um, and where the easements have been acquired, the, the easement varied in, in width. And sometimes it's about 30 feet and the, sh the skinniest one is about 20 feet. And if we have a pipe there and the idea is to put a pipe parallel to the existing. Ideal situation would be to separate them by 10 feet because that would give you the flexibility to kind of go back in there and then dig without having to compromise one of the other pipes. But uh, certainly you don't have to do it. I think if uh, from a cost perspective, if there, is, uh, uh, if there is a need or an appetite to do this type of work, it's more efficient to do it while you have a contractor on site because now you're not going through the regulatory process to, to permit it again. Let's just say you did it today and you don't wanna wait two more years to, okay, well, after two years, you decide to wanna go back and fix it. Now you gotta go through the permitting process again one more time. Right. And if I understand the, the, the technology to be used to rehab the project, it would be essentially lining it. So you would, you would access it through the available uh, manholes that we have uh, in place and you would, you would use some type of product to, to, to line. So there would be no, there, the, the, the rehabbing of the, of the line wouldn't be, ex, wouldn't likely wouldn't include significant excavation. It would just be accessing the, the old line at certain available spots. So well, that's correct because the uh, limitations, this is 16,000 linear feet um, from previous experiences and working with alignments like this one here, uh, every 1500 feet or so you need an access pit. So you need to cut into the pipeline, uh, send the camera through it, uh, well, send the jetter through it, clean it, and then put a camera through. You know, right now it's kind of hard to tell what is the extent of the damage. Could be a pinhole, could be just uh, a cheesecake uh, or uh, of a pipe uh, Swiss cheese of a pipe, I should say, that's it. Uh, where you, you know, it may not be suitable to be lined. So you'd have to either cut it and replace a section of it, right? Uh, or if it's just simple, like a uh, loss of cement lining, you could put in the CIPP a cured in place liner and that would be just good enough. But you, you're not gonna know until you put a camera through and then you do like an internal assessment of the pipeline. Okay, and, and in order to, like you said, you need access every 1600 feet? Every 1,500 feet, because the limitation of the jetter and the uh, and the camera, okay. you could you could get away with 2,000 feet on the longer runs, and if you don't if you have bends, that would be uh, you know it would be limited to about 1,500. Okay. Do, do, uh, any idea whether or not we we currently have uh, the manholes provide access in, in those in that limitations? The manholes do, do not provide access because the manholes are equipped with uh, uh, combination valves, the, uh, the air release and vacuum relief valve. You'd have to disassemble the valve, cut the pipe. And the way this uh, pipe was constructed was constructed, it didn't really have like a T 
to be able to say, okay, I want to undo the valve and then put a camera through the T. It is the valve is actually tapped on the line. So you'd have to cut the pipe and then be able to, you know, splice it after the fact. Okay. So, so, so inspection will require some type of um, soil excavation in order to access the pipe every 15 minutes. So. If, if, if you look uh, on the uh, uh, alter, alternate A, and the reason alternate A is high because you need to not only provide access bits, but you'd have to support the excavation too, based on the depth of the pipeline. Yeah. Um, it, you know, and, and actually the cost, the cost is, a lot of that cost is in A, but if A is completed and you think, uh, we think that the pipe is suitable to be replaced, I think makes the decision to go with B uh, that much easier. Okay. Okay. Does anyone have any further questions regarding, um, regarding that? Okay. Uh, project alternatives report. So, uh, um, so the, uh, you know, my, my thought is that $16 million was really high. Uh, Don Essen, who's not in attendance today, he thought 16 million was really low. Um, well, I shouldn't say I thought it was $16 million high. Just $16 million was a, was a, was a lot of money uh, for, for a single project. Um, Don Essen thought that 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 16 million may not be enough for the for this project, but uh, you know DPW has has said time over that they're fairly confident with that 16 million dollar number. So are we? I think uh, you know the, the numbers are uh, you know like I said the the previous experiences with similar force mains uh, today, if it's just the pipe itself. Digging and replacing, putting pipe in is about two hundred fifty to three hundred dollars per foot. It's the other cost associated with it. You know, the manholes, the restoration, and some other things like you know the unknown. Perhaps could be some asbestos stuff. Um, you know, um, some contamination that we carried. But uh, I think we're pretty comfortable with the number. Okay. All right. Uh, just David, I, if I could just add, I mean, I guess it's important to know too that you know we're getting some water meat water main replaced. You know, asbestos water main that's long overdue and we're getting um, a substantial amount of um, main thoroughfare overlaid you know and those are kind of i don't want to say added costs but those are you know cost of the project but made sense to do you know with the project so um you know there's some other benefits too yeah you know, for that whole auburn street area okay and so you mentioned that um uh, because if, if, if we're not funded through the SRF, we don't need to follow SRF guidelines. Is that, is it, does that mean that there's a potential cost savings there? Is that, is that what that means? Uh, you know, the, uh, the, the uh, there's a checklist that comes with the SRF program. So if you're a contractor bidding on, on this job, you'd have to kind of meet the, uh, the uh, different type of wage rates. You have to have the diesel retrofit program. You have to have um, some other contingencies, uh, the MBEs, WBEs requirements a little bit different, um, and that applies also for engineering firms. Uh, so yeah, if uh, and there's the reporting, right? So you know there is the interviews, the uh, the contractors, personnel on site would have to be subject to interviews just to make sure that they follow in the guidelines, they get in the the rates. Uh, it doesn't really add a whole lot, but it doesn't, you know. Um, some people look at it like, okay, uh, we could live without it, I guess. Okay, all right. Um, all right, so, so with, with the easements filed, uh, that, that grants us access uh, to, to, the, to the areas, not indefinitely, but until the, those easements expire? Yeah, I mean, when we did the assessment back in 2019, the, uh, one of the, the uh, salvage yards, they had the cars on top stacked up on top of the, the force main so we had them you know knocked on doors and sent them letters and he had them moved um you know brockton would allow you to go through the landfill like we did when we did the assessment and then same with uh, the easement uh, across the the, the cross-country piece oh. these are all recorded easements yeah okay yeah and we actually we we did a separate contract to clear because it had been overgrown for years um and 
I want to say a couple of years ago, at town meeting, we appropriated funds to buy equipment that we can now maintain that easement ourselves and maintain the growth. So we can, you know, we'll go in there after this and you know, keep the growth down ourselves. So we always have access. Okay. All right. And then in, uh, in terms of the cost estimates, does that include uh, 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 owner's rep costs in there? Is there a yes. line on for that? Yep. And then as the owner's rep, um, is that, would that company be responsible for uh, making sure that the work is done per, uh, at, per the specifications and then that the work is built per the work, the work that was done, like that, that type of review? Absolutely. There is a piece that is the construction administration that would be done from the office. Um, you know, the review and submittals, responding to requests for information, processing pay requisitions, conducting weekly, uh, you know, uh, progress meeting at the, at the project, uh, you know, getting the, the document. Uh, and then there's an oversight piece that a person would be out in the field overseeing, making sure that we, you know, the, uh, the contract is following the, the plans and specifications. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, any other, any further questions from the committee? Anybody have anything? Justin? Yeah. Yes. Just a question for um. Actually, maybe Kevin or Dennis on this. Uh, was there any particular reason that the um, commissioners opted to pursue the uh, backup pipe system, the the rehab, the old one? Uh, I don't know if there's any particular concerns or just uh, you know, you'd rather have it and and be glad you did it than wish you'd done. It couple of years down the road. Yeah, I guess that there was certainly plenty of discussions. Um, you know, having redundancy is always nice, especially when you only, this is it. Um, and we got very lucky the two breaks that we had and where they were and the accessibility. Um, and I've, I've told plenty of people, no one even realized, you know, that their whole, so basically the whole sewer system was shut down for, you know, five to six days at a time. Um, it, you know, it, we, we set it up with the bid with the adults, you know, kind of for that reason too. So, you know, we can take one last evaluation at it, you know, when the numbers do come in and if it's not financially feasible or, you know, um, we don't want to do it, then we just don't take the alternates. Um, you know, but I think, you know, kind of what Z had saying, if you have a contractor, you have them bidding the project, that's when you're going to get your best numbers. So I'd say we're still, deciding whether we want to or not, um, I, you know, I, I, I would like to, um, it is, you know, obviously a lot more cost certainly, but I think having it um, would be better than not. Dave? Yeah, yeah, Ferg, go ahead. Uh, and just sitting here, and I don't know if this is an idea that makes sense or if it's totally stupid, but I'll open the mouth. <laughs> what if we ran a pipe from Brockton and had it just come out to Auburn Street, and instead of doing the all the way back, but we gave ourselves the redundancy at least to Auburn Street, so that if anything happened, we're not going to have to go into the areas that cause us the greatest pain, so to speak. Would that make any sense at all? I could answer this, Kevin, if you want me to. So, yeah, go ahead. So basically, with with the assessment, you know, we thought it was just limited to the cross country piece, but there was some indications on Auburn that the few locations where the soils turned out to be corrosive. And, you know, because assessment of, of pipelines is so difficult because you're not going to be able to see, like, let's just say you could today, there's a bunch of technologies in there. You could send a smart ball, which the kind of detects the gas pockets inside the pipeline, but nothing with a full flowing pipe, even if there's a meaningful way to be able to send the camera through here and retrieve it on the other side, you're not going to be able to see much what's going on in the pipeline. And I guess the fear is if you did this, now you still have about 3,000 linear feet or 4,000 linear feet or even 7,000 linear feet on Auburn that could be suspect, right? Because you don't, you don't know when uh, next rupture was going to happen. So uh, that's part of the reason you, you know, the thought process is just do it all and not take any risk. Thank you. Yeah, and I guess just adding to that, I mean, 
we've gone past our life expectancy, you know, of the whole system. Um, you know, the, the breaks forced us into that a little bit, but you know, know. What, what I'm saying is the second pipe, the redundancy pipe, not putting that all the way back. I mean, would that make any sense? I don't know how expensive the pipe is because obviously your labor costs aren't going to be a whole heck of a lot different. You have the road open anyways. But if the pipe itself is very expensive, you know, uh, I don't know how much we would save. I don't know what type of exact footage you're talking. So, you know, so the paving would be the same, right? The only thing you'd be saving is however, however many linear feet times about three of $350 per foot. This is what you'd be saving. Okay. Mr. Chairman, um, if, yep. I don't know who said that. Lincoln. Yeah, that was me. That was Lincoln. Hey, uh, um, just, just a quick point. I, I know there was a discussion about SRF and possible other funding sources. It, this is a you know a little bit off topic as far as the engineering, but I just wanted to bring it up. Um, you know, I think one other consideration that should definitely be under, you know, a strong consideration is the fact that uh, we you know we do have a really the town does really have a, a very healthy uh, retained earnings balance certified in fiscal year 2021 in the enterprise fund, $4.1 million. So I, I just want to bring that up. It's not a, you know, grant or low interest loan funding opportunity, but I just want to bring that up to this committee because I think it's a strong consideration to how much is borrowing. If town meeting approves this project in general, how much is borrowing and how much is possibly cash from retained earnings. So I just want to mention that to this committee that Conversation may have already been discussed some, but I want to make sure that the members of this committee, I, I think that's a strong consideration when you're talking about funding sources. That's all. Yeah, Dennis, you want to speak on that? Uh, well, I wanted to say from uh, back to Fred's question that if we did not do the, um, you know, reline on, on the Auburn Street uh, force main, it kind of defeats the purpose of, uh, you know, replacing the water main so that when we uh, go through the expense of repaving all of Auburn Street um, um, uh, that, you know, if we have later on tried to use the um, uh, unlined old main uh, and it, it burst on the farm on basically underneath new pavement. Oh, I, I just said it was an idea. I didn't say it was a good idea. I, <laughs> I understand. Um, as far as the uh, retained earnings is the 4.1, that's that's pretty much a balance that the DPW has always carried. And, um, um, you know, it's, uh, and we, you know, we have other projects too that we, we you know, we regularly try and dip into that. And, and But we always try and keep it around that number um, in case we have a catastrophic failure in either the water distribution system or uh, the, the sewer system. If we were to, so for example, to experience a, um, a, a catastrophic fire like the Auburn Street pump station, we'd eat that retains earning up pretty quick. So that more or less gets, you know, has in the past been set aside just as insurance. Yeah, and if I could, I just want to reiterate, you know, the commissioners, you know, we, we obviously talked about that a lot. Um, we would like to, you know, fund the projects for the full value um, and keep using the retained earnings for what we use it for. Um, we've done millions of dollars worth of water replacement work. Um, you know, we're in the middle of a water meter replacement project. You know, it's kind of got shelved due to COVID. Um, you know, uh, Dennis has a very aggressive uh, pump replacement at all these sewer pump stations. You know, so all that is happening, <clears throat> you know, out of that fund, you know, without any, um, without any, even any rate increases. Um, so, you know, the board and the commissioners um, feel strongly that we should just keep maintaining our system and improving our system as we've been doing with that fund. And unfortunately, you know, I think the best, what we think is the best option is just to fund the full value. Kevin, I, I don't mean to sound adversarial, but just, just to be clear, um, all those, all those uh, pump projects have been funded uh, well, funding has been approved through town meetings separately uh, outside of, uh, well, funding has been approved to do the projects. The funding sources may have came from retained earnings. So that, that money is already set aside for those projects. Just, just to be clear, that's not coming directly from enterprise. It's money that's already been, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, encumbered. Encumbered. Allocated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The projects, 
but we're we're paying you know we're taking loans we have debt on um you know the, the route 18 projects the water water meter replacement um you, you know we've taken um loans out for some of those projects um, you know the yearly uh, you know small amounts for you know some of the smaller projects yes that that's you know year to year and dennis always has his articles um you know, to take money out of retained earnings, but I guess there's, there's some debt that we're also paying out of that fund every year. So yeah, why, why you t uh, so I don't understand. So uh, over the past couple of years, uh, Dennis did come back, come uh, to the finance committee uh, in, uh, with very aggressive uh, articles to, in, which were all approved for, for pumping system uh, improvements. And that money was um, all allocated. Why, why were there loans required to be taken for these projects if, if the money's already encumbered, because there was there were million dollar projects, the multi million dollar projects. But the money, I mean, the money's encumbered through town meeting. It's approved. The town meeting approved it. Money, boom, the money's there. All right, we got. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, maybe, maybe we need to address that another time. Yeah, but, 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 Mr. Chairman, if, if I could just just as a technical kind of thing, do, doing the finances, and I I don't you know I don't know enough yet to know about any individual specific project, although we can obviously look it up, but, but the, the question, you know, when, it, when it's appropriated, either it's retained earnings and that would, re, would reduce the retained earnings balance that we have available and, and or bonding, which, which is funds that don't exist yet, but would need to be borrowed later. And then that debt, those debt payments paid either with new, new revenue uh, you know, from user fees, obviously, or from some other portion of retained earnings that would need to be further appropriated. So, so I, I don't know what specific project, but but just as a sort of financial accounting, either it would have to be either one of those. But if it was being bonded, eventually, you know, that those bond payments would be coming from either new user fees or retained earnings or a combination of the two. Yep. That's clear. Yep. Yep, yep, we're getting off topic. Maybe we'll address that at another time. Bob, did you have something? Uh, I, no, okay. Um, so let's see. So we were talking about funding. Oh, so so that's that, that's the uh, so Fred and, and Lincoln, you guys are bringing up subjects that um, that remind me. So I'm trying to wrap my head around this. So the, the project gets funded. The project gets done. So so let's just say a new pipe gets done. You're anticipating that pipe life the lifespan of the pipe to be 20 to 30 years. Would it make sense to, to, to just lay the pipe and then maybe come back in, in 10, 15 years and, 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 and do, uh, you know, the option of, of rehabbing the, the old pipe, uh, you know, significantly reducing upfront costs, you know, the first project is 8 million. And then, you know, you get halfway through that project and, and then maybe, maybe doing the, doing the, uh, the alternative of, of rehabbing that, you know, ha having the secondary pipe somewhere down the future where the lifespan of the pipe has 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 is you know has, has been spent you know I mean, we're talking we're talking about rehabbing an old pipe creating redundancy for a pipe that's just being installed that probably has a lifespan of 20 30 years or more so so i, so, I mean that's my question i mean does it make sense to create an immediate redundancy for some for a brand new pipe or does it make sense to maybe wait and, and you know, yes, it, you, you're going to incur, you know, uh, you know, you're not going to have the uh, scales of, um, uh, you, you know, you're, you're going to incur more cost, more cost because you're going to have a different mobilization, but it's not going to be double the cost. Um, you know, does it make sense to, to, to maybe evaluate having redundancy sometime in the future instead of on day one? So I don't know if, I don't know if anybody wants to answer that. I mean, I think I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, it certainly can um, be evaluated. Um, I don't know what, you know, what the costs would be. I mean, obviously the longer the main sits there without any flow, um, you know, the things deteriorate. Um, you know, I guess that, that would be a, I guess at best, you know, that anybody would be able to um, say, okay, if it's that for five years, you know, what, what, you know, that's a continue corroding from the outside. And, um, you know, I guess you don't know, you know, I'm gonna, I, I wouldn't be able to say anything. Or, or so, uh, that. 
it, you know what I mean? The alternates are about, I'm just doing some quick, the alternates are about $2 million roughly. I think that's the add up. I'm doing quick math in my head here. If you did yeah, both. Yeah, um, and you know, so that's, alternates. Well, well, alternative one is 8.8 .8 million. And then, so now, so, you know, we, we, we've discussed, uh, so alternative two, 2A and 2B, and 2A and 2B are, are up to upwards of 14 million. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think the cost estimate that you're looking at, this was from the report, from the 2019 report. No, so basically, no. yeah, this from the 2019, the, the most recent one we did was 2020. Uh, we sent this when, when the design and the permitting advanced enough to understand what really needs to be done. So the, the alternate, alternate A, Bear with me one sec. So we're saying here that uh, <clears throat> the to replace the pipe with the contingency is eleven point five million, and if you take the the sorry, <laughs> I'll take it back. So the. Uh, Construction subtotal 9.397135, and then we added the general conditions, the bonds, insurance, overhead, and profit that gets us to $11.5 million. And then engineering services, and then we added the alternates. The alternates, both alternates is a difference between 11.5 million and 14.6 million. Now, if you get through alternate, alternate A and you determine that the pipeline isn't worth the repair, now you stop right there, obviously, right? And if, if the pipe is worth the repair, alternate B is not gonna cost that much more because now you could, you know, you already dug the test pits, you already cleaned and CCPV the pipe and you know exactly what the extent of the damage is. But, uh, you know, to that point, I, I guess, you know, I just want to clear one thing up. When you design a pipeline today, especially we certainly hope for a lot more than 20 or 30 years on this pipeline. And the idea of a redundancy, uh, you know, right now you have you have the the uh, alternates incorporated in the bid document, so you're not really designing this, and you have a contractor on board, and you're not going through the permitting process, uh, which is pretty lengthy. I think we, you know, if I were to, you know, today, if I just off the top of my head here, I think we've been in the permitting path for almost five or six months, right? So, so this is this is the and then the pipe. To Kevin's point, if if the pipe is sitting there, especially a a metal pipe that has uh, sewage in it, or even if you drain it, you still have you know the the fact that the pipe is empty and the corrosive environment or the corrosive air going through the pipe is probably not going to last very long. So you either make a decision today, perhaps that you know what we not we're just going to abandon it and leave it in place. Or maybe take a look at the bids, and if the numbers are favorable, you may want to decide to go ahead and then make the uh, make the uh, appropriate repairs. But again, it's it's up to the to you guys, the committee. I don't think you have to do anything with this pipe. All right. So, but but just to be clear, uh, so I, I printed off so page twenty two and twenty three of the of the of the final uh, assessment includes the alternative uh, alternatives. Alternative one: install new HDPE. PVC force main and abandoned existing, existing force main. Alternative one consists of the open cut installation of 1600 feet of ATV uh, sewer force main and abandoning the existing 20 inch force main. And then when you go to page 497, uh, 496 is, is appendix M of the cost estimates. So co alternative one cost estimate with the $125,000 bid alternative is eight point eight eight million eight hundred forty four thousand dollars. So that so that so then so so that's that's basically putting down a new new pipeline, uh, abandoning the old one, and then anything anything beyond that. So once you go beyond that, it's the alternative two and two it two two a and two b, which includes inspection of the pipeline and potential <clears throat> lining it. That's when you jump up to fourteen uh, you know potential fourteen point six and fourteen point. $8 million. Right. So the 2A would be just to, to rehab the existing pipeline and then 2B would be cross-connecting because oftentimes when you have 
redundancy in the pipeline, you, you want it to be able, like some municipalities, like we did in Plymouth, for instance, they wanted to uh, be able to cross connect these pipes at a couple of different locations and then maybe use segment or segments of the pipeline to, for maintenance and operation purposes. But then again, back to that document, this was the cost estimate that was created back in 2019 with the report. And then we had updated the cost estimate since and there's no more uh, you know, alternate 2A and 2B. I think the commission at the time, the commissioners and the DPW, the thought process was we put a pipe in and then we look at bid alternates to either look at the existing pipeline, rehab it, and then we look at one option would be just take a look at what the extent of the damage is and then option B would be to repair those damages. Okay. <laughs> Uh, are, there, are, there more, are there more estimates out there that we haven't seen? That, so are you saying that there's another estimate out there beyond the so, final yeah. report? The, the report that you have dates back to 2019 when we did the assessment of the soil. But then once we completed the, once we advanced the design, we revisited with a cost estimate and we provided those uh, to the commissioners maybe about a month or two ago, Kevin, I think. Oh, Kevin, can yeah, you Dave, that, Dave that? I had, so when, when Dennis and I met with you, I think it was last month, um, just after that, Ziad had put together an estimate with a little narrative and I had sent that out and that's- I don't uh, have a copy of that. Uh, I, I'm sure, I, I, okay. if it was a cost estimate that, that's similar to, to these, um, I, I guess I'll take a look, but so, so, I guess what I'm hearing is scrap the cost estimates that are in the uh, final report and utilize whatever has been sent via email. Uh, I'll, I'll check my email. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure if I received it, I forwarded it along to this committee. Um, that'd be good information to know prior to this meeting. Um, so, but, uh, so I guess, you know, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at that again. Uh, so I'm not providing misinformation out there in, in, in discussing something that's not relevant. Um, I guess the, the report is, was, was the feasibility study in the initial design, and we've gone a lot further. We've gone over a year since that, and, and that's the estimates we're dealing with. So the, the alternate A and B um, is about $2 million, maybe, you know, maybe a little more with general conditions and things like that. So that's, that's the difference. Um, so, you know, that's, and, and like I said, we have the option we can take it or we can just, you know, put the pipe in and abandon it in place. All right. And, and then have to so take we, either one of those alternates. Are we still talking about replacing a 20 inch line with a 24, 24 inch line? It's uh, based on a hydraulic assessment that we did. The, uh, the 20 inch is uh, adequate to uh, basically carry the, the, the flows coming from the station into the, into the, the uh, Brockton system. All right. So, so again, th that final report talks about a 24-inch line, so, but we're, we're talking that's been scrapped for a 20-inch line. 20-inch uh, line. I thought the the uh, I'll have to double check that, but it was always a 20-inch line, and we did a, a hydraulic analysis, and we confirmed the 20-inch line. All right. No. Okay. All right, so I'll take a look at my emails and see what other information is out there. Anybody else have any questions? All right, thanks, Saeed. I appreciate your time. Uh, thanks, DPW. Thank appreciate you. your time. Thank right. you. Thank you. All right, so um, so that's that. Um, I guess I'll have to go through my emails and see. Um, that there's another cost estimate out there that's different from what's being presented in that final report. Um, uh, all right. Um, so uh, unless anybody has any, has any other discussions on that, we'll move on to uh, uh, the, our remaining agenda items. Um, um, agenda item uh, that's uh, stand, uh, uh, an ongoing standing is the uh, town administrator uh, report. I'm happy to announce uh, Lincoln Heineman, our new town administrator for the town of Whitman. Um, uh, Lincoln, I don't know if you know everybody here. Me, I'm Dave Cordero. Uh, I don't know if anybody wants to, uh, anybody who, uh, everybody wants to maybe, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll introduce everybody. Uh, Josh uh, McNeil, Justin Evans, I'm sure you know, Aaron Taylor, 
Bob Curran and uh, Fred Small, uh, who, who had left, uh, uh, is a, um, he is an at-large member as well as the uh, Whitman Hanson Regional School District liaison. Uh, he is a uh, Whitman uh, uh, School District uh, committee member, um, as well as the chairman of the Whitman Middle School um, uh, feasibility. I forget the exact name of that, uh, that, that, that committee. Uh, I am the finance committee liaison. Sorry, this is your, this is your, uh, your <laughs> time. Right. Go ahead. No, 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 I, I appreciate that. And I appreciate the, uh, the introduction, you know, Aaron, nice to meet you. I think I've met everybody else on this call, but nice to meet you and uh, look forward to working with all of you. Um, uh, it's an exciting opportunity. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to be in Whitman and, and to be with all of you. Um, I, I don't have a large report tonight, uh, but but I will say to your question earlier, uh, Mr. Chairman, about the warrants. So the warrant, both the special and annual town meeting warrants are open now and will be closing on March 5th. Um, so, uh, you know, right now, um, my primary focus over the last week and a half has been on operating, but certainly I'm turning my attention to capital and, um, you know, being with this committee is, is a good, um, I don't know, I don't want to say start, but, but a good towards the beginning uh, of that work. So looking forward to working with all of you and, and putting together what's going to be on the warrant and obviously the, the main conversations about the sewer forest main and looking forward to being part of that conversation and figuring out what's on the warrant for that. All right, thank you. Um, so uh, 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 any, any questions for Lincoln at this, at this time? Uh, so in regards to the finance committee, uh, I did not attend the most recent um, committee uh, uh, meeting uh, of Tuesday night. Um, I did watch it um, uh, online. Um, in regards to this, uh, in reference to this committee, um, there wasn't there wasn't anything of relevance to us. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think Lincoln. I know you were there. And I'm, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I don't think there was anything in, of relevance to this committee. Uh, I don't. I don't believe so. Yeah, no, most of the conversation was about operating. Yeah. Um, so that's that's my report. Um, so with the with the with, with the three five closing of the annual town meeting, um, we have we have only one more meeting prior to that. Um, uh, uh, prior to that, um, the warrant closing. Um, so, some, so, uh, so, some, some. Th there's a there's a lot of requests out there right now um, from. Uh, well, there's requests out there from uh, DPW, police, fire, and Whitman Hanson Regional School District. At, at this point, they're, they're, they've only been requests sent in. They haven't included the, the full, um, actually one other one from Social Vote Tech, which I need to forward over to you guys. Um, well, well, let me put that aside for now. Um, uh, the requests that have been come in uh, aren't fully const constructed in the full manner that you would see in a warrant. It doesn't provide, uh, a lot of them don't provide funding sources and some of them don't have actual amounts. Uh, so I, so um, it, it puts us in a little bit of a, a, a conundrum because you know, part, part of our role is to you know, vet out potential appropriate funding sources for these um, requests and, and then and make all those recommendations to the Board of Selectmen um, in order for them to make, uh, make appropriate decisions on what should be on the warrant and what should not. Um, so, um, you know, I, I, it, and if I could just add to that, I, I, I don't know, um, you know, there's a conversation we have offline too. I don't know yet if this, if has this committee taken a formal position on any of those capital requests yet? I know you've had some discussions about it, but. Uh, uh, only on the four sewer, four, uh, sewer line. Okay. Yeah, so 
so I don't know, you know, what, what tack you want to take, Mr. Chairman. I mean, the, um, you know, certainly I, I, I need, you know, I can be helpful in um, truing up and getting clearer, a clear understanding about what exactly, you know, for the, for those that, for example, we don't have amounts on available, um, what those amounts would be. And, you know, and certainly I think, you know, Justin can weigh in this obviously too, but but certainly if there's something that uh, is going to be a request to be on the warrant past March 5th, you know, I, I, I would think probably the, the, you know, depending on its importance uh, as a capital item, I would think the board of selectmen would be, would entertain, you know, reopening the warrant and inserting that. But that's obviously a conversation we can have as we go. Uh, right. So, right. So, so the, uh, so a question I have is um, uh, with the closing of the warrant, that doesn't mean that every, capital article that was requested goes on to the warrant, correct? Well, so, so it'll be up to the board of selectmen what's on the warrant, right? So, so that, that's, a, that's a closing of, of submissions, yeah. but, it, but it's not a, a decision from the board of selectmen about what is actually on the final warrant. Does that make okay. sense? Yep, yep. So um, do, 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 the, do the requests have to be in full, um, so we're looking for in, the, the, in, in full form, meaning that does, does the request uh, have to include the exact item, funding source, you know, as it would appear at the time meeting? Yeah, so it wouldn't have to technically. I don't know what the past practice of the Board of Selectmen is at this moment. So, you know, I mean, you know, and I can get an answer on that and maybe Justin, you know, can provide some input on it. Uh, I'm sorry, you know, I, I don't know, but, but certainly, you know, as a legal matter, no, it wouldn't need to be in final form. Okay, so that so that that so if that's if that's the case, that won't trip us up. We, we have them in hand, um, um, and the uh, department heads have agreed to come in and discuss them. So um, you know we we you know we can just uh, they just the department heads will just need to make sure that any requests that were submitted to this committee would need to be submitted directly to the board of selectmen. Uh, I guess that way, uh, that way nothing gets uh, gets uh, missed. Right. Um, so, uh, uh, do you mind do you mind putting that on your plate of things to do? Sure. Okay. All right. uh, yeah, yeah. If you don't mind, uh, it, it'd just be it would just be cleaner that way. That way, the response will go directly to you, to you representing the board of selectmen, and then we can you know if there's any if there's any differences in the requests that we received to date, we can deal with that at this meeting. Go ahead, Josh. I, I typically believe the department heads in the past have forwarded their budgets to or their capital requests to the town administrator and copy to the finance committee or vice versa, or send it to the finance committee and copy to the town administrator. So the town administrator should always be on board as far as to uh, what's coming in and what's going as far as to uh, make sure that, you know, if there's nothing missed, if you will, uh, whether it's approved or it's not approved, at least the information is provided. Yeah, and that's, you know, uh, that... Um that's something that may well have happened back then and we'll restart that process and make sure I have it on them all now, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. And just while we're on the subject, uh, Lincoln, when you, when you get a chance, um, take a look at, uh, the, there's one of the emails that I sent you that includes the uh, article 38 uh, of the special town meeting in 2015, which, which created this committee. It, it, it dissolved the previous committee, established this committee, identified the responsibilities and timelines. Um, one thing that we've, uh, that I've, I, I've, uh, discussed at the beginning and, and, and we've pretty much been in collective, uh, agreement is that we're trying to, we're going to try to hold, we're trying to follow these guidelines, these responsibilities to the letter, uh, doing it this year, uh, doing it, it had, um, doing it this year would have been, would have been difficult. And um, so we're planning on, uh, we've discussed ha having this in place by next year. One of the timelines is having capital articles uh, submitted to this committee uh, by October 1st. Yep. Um, uh, I just wanted to get that out. At, uh, all right. So uh, if anybody has anything, doesn't have anything else, uh, entertain a motion um, to adjourn. Motion. Uh, real quick, Dave, uh, I just had a good question for you. Um, just because this committee hasn't voted meeting minutes since we hired a recording secretary, I just wanted to know if you had an update on, on where we are there. 
that's on my list of things to do. I apologize. Okay. I, I, uh, I, I do have to send her apology. She had me sent me uh, recently, a couple of weeks ago, the most recent ones and the original ones beginning of the season way before that. And I just, it's just been on the bottom of my list of things to do, but that, that yeah. is, I'm going to make it a priority. I apologize. And I, yeah, I just want to remind you. Thank you. Yep. Go ahead, Josh. Sorry, I just want to give a quick uh, rundown too. I think, uh, you know, with Lincoln, uh, you know, starting out, I think it's important to, uh, for Lincoln to understand that uh, for the past several years, we've been doing sort of projects on demand, if you will. So uh, I think that's the, the biggest caveat here. And I think that, you know, the Madden report certainly helps us and, and gives us a guide, if you will. Uh, and hopefully moving forward, we can, you know, at least have a, a better plan of action and, and start looking at these uh, projects in a, you know, uh, higher level, if you will, you know, over the course of years instead of actually uh, days or months, if you will. Um, I think that was, again, one of our biggest stumbling blocks here is that we're trying to solve problems in, directly in front of us instead of down the line. Uh, and I think more specifically so with the uh, sewer uh, project at hand here, I think I asked a question last time, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think as far as to uh, you know, we're going to spend $15 million potentially on this uh, one, you know, line down Auburn Street, you know, do we do we have an idea of what the other parts of the sewer system look like at this point? You know what I mean? It's kind of um, a little off topic from what we just discussed, but it's just one of those things that we really need to have a grasp on, you know, uh, what's out there, what's to come uh, before we start, you know, uh, looking at spending money. Yep, I agree, agreed. Um, okay. Uh, anybody else? Anything else? All right. Uh, I'll understand a motion. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Nevitt, seconded by Josh McNeil. Yes. All right. Roll call vote. Dave Cadera, yes. Josh McNeil. Yes. Lincoln. Yes. Aaron. Yes. Justin. Yes. Bob. You're on mute, Bob. No. All right, that's a yes. Um, All right. Um, awesome. Meeting adjourned at seven six forty seven. Thanks, everyone. You got it. Thank you.